right, ladies and gentlemen. Let me get a better picture. There we go. Bam. All right. From BreakBert.com. This was announced yesterday. Joey B to announce executive level gun control office. That is right, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking about, look at that headline right there. We're talking about an actual gun control office in the White House. In the, in the White House, baby. Right there. Right down the hall from him and where Hunter's doing coke and all this other kind of stuff. It's gonna. It's just a party in there. Why is this a bad thing? Many reasons. A, it's it's now centralizing and making almost to an, a cabinet level position. It's not an official cabinet level position yet, but now we're actually going to see this being marketed further. Secondly, once one of these things starts, and all of you can finish that sentence. They never go away. Ever, ever, ever. Never, 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 never go away. So awful things all the way around when we're looking at this idea. So Joe Biden does this. This is by the great AWR Hawkins at Breitbart.com. Joey B will announce the Office of Gun Violence Prevention on Friday. And his new office will be coordinated with failed presidential candidate, mini bike Bloomberg's gun control proponents and others. What have I been saying? The reason they were putting these um, these things out uh, as far as um, all the new rules and all these things that were, they were talking about is because they need to get back with Mike Bloomberg. They needed to give back to every town. They needed to give back to Wine Moms Demand Action. All these other ones. Project Unloaded for all the money that they funnel into the Democratic campaigns during election season. This is the bone they're throwing back to them. According to the Washington Post, quote, the new office will report up through Stephanie Feldman, the White House staff secretary and longtime Biden policy aide who has worked on the firearms issue for years, quote unquote. Coordination in the office is expected between the White House, Community Justice Action Fund, whatever the hell that means, and every town for gun safety. Um, which all sound nice, but we know is one of the leading gun control proponents out there, right? We know for a fact that every town leads the way uh, every time when it comes to proposing common sense gun uh, guns violence solutions. Every town was one of the driving forces in trying to convince. Governor Grisham out in New Mexico to put the the uh, the temporary gun ban for public health out there because they were the first ones to come out and applaud it. Every time one of these gun control actions take place, they're one of the first groups to come out and applaud it and support it and so forth. They did the same thing in Tennessee. They were one of the driving forces in Tennessee. And so now every town, a, a political action committee that is its entire focus is to strip you of your God-given right to keep bare, bare uh, arms will have a position in the White House. These people are the same people that are saying, oh, the NRA gun lobby is so powerful. Oh, the gun lobby is so powerful. The anti-gun lobby has a seat in the White House. Shannon Watts, a Mike Bloomberg affiliate, lackey, who founded Wine Moms Demand Action, praised the creation of the Office of Gun Violence Prevention. What, was she going to be mad about it? Saying, quote, if this announcement is in fact the creation of a single point of leadership on gun violence in the administration, it's a very big deal for the movement. Hold on a second. The creation of a single point of leadership, you had, well, I mean, he is a bag of gas, but when Obama was in office, you had a single point of leadership. You have the friggin' Leader of the Democratic Party is the single point of leadership. All of them are. They all are in lockstep. They all speak the same language. They all have the same talking points. Hell, even when they came out and supposedly denounced Governor Grisham's unconstitutional treasonous gun, quote unquote, ban, they all came out in lockstep and denounced that. There is no um, difference of opinions when it comes to the Democratic Party and firearms. The only time you ever heard that, but I think it was back in 08 when Bernie Sanders, Bernie, Bernie Sanders, when he uh, when he talked about rural versus urban as a gun issue. 
After that, they put him in his place, gave him another mansion. Now he thinks guns need to be banned as well. There is no difference in gun control when it comes from our political enemies. And now your tax money, your tax money, I will stress this again, the money they steal from you because taxation is theft will be now used in the White House to try and find ways to strip you of your right to keep and bear arms. Now, let's go as DeSantis, Trump, you know, Nikki Haley. Don't ask Pence because the guy's not even going to make it to, to, to January of next year. Will you get rid of? Will you will you eliminate? Right? Ask Vivek. It's easy as cake with Vivek. Ask him. Hey, man, are you going to get rid of the Office of Gun Violence Prevention? When you, get in, when you get into the uh, White House, is that going to be one of the first things you do? And they'll hem and haw and say, oh, well, it's part of the whole thing. They're not going to get rid of it because once a federal program starts, it's entrenched in the bureaucracy. The swamp has expanded. has expanded in a negative way for you and I. She added, wine mom demand action Shannon Watts, who, by the way, we covered the story. She was supposed to retire like six months ago. Right? She's like Patrick Ewing on the Seattle uh, Sonics. She was supposed to retire. She's still there. Quote, a government focal point dedicated to creating a framework for overseeing national policy, which there is no national policy because there's 44 state constitutions, which we just learned. Apparently, everybody just learned about with New Mexico. There's 44 state constitutions that say you have no power here. Research and resources, your tax money taken to do supposed research on gun violence prevention will be more than symbolic. Uh, the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, which is now being used against us, is more than just symbolic. But do you understand? It's never enough for these people. It is never enough, and they desperately want you disarmed, especially when they got a flood of illegals coming every single day. Every single day they're coming, and they're still desperately trying to disarm you? I mean, they are not going to be happy until we're all like that guy in Westport, Connecticut, who can't do anything when two guys walk up on him and steal his Aston Martin. Now, I don't have an Aston Martin. I have a 10-year-old pickup truck. But still, they want every single one of us. And the fact that they're trying to say, well, we haven't done enough, despite the fact they have the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act passed, despite the fact that they are doing the best they can culturally to shift the opinion on gun ownership. And some, in some way, shape, or form, they're doing a pretty good job. They've completely destroyed suburban white women. They've completely that demographic is gone. Now, granted, there are a lot of a lot of gun mamas out there, and you guys, you ladies, you guys, you ladies are awesome, and I, I appreciate everything you do. But the overall segment is gone. You'll never get it back ever. And that, and yet, it's not enough. Now, ARW Hawkins has to finish this out. On August 31st, Breitbart News reported the ATF was expanding, using executive rule to expand background checks. We've talked about the, the background checks of being universal uh, via the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, where you have to, everybody becomes a gun dealer. That's what he's talking about there. But in case you haven't heard, this is what Attorney General Merrick Garland said. The Bipartisan Safer Communities Act was passed by Congress to reduce gun violence, quote unquote. By the way, a Republican helped walk this sucker right up to Joey B's desk, so you can thank them for that. Including expanding background checks that keep guns out of the hands of criminals, even though, let's just go with the Grisham defense, they know it won't. The proposed rule implements Congress's mandate to expand the definition of who must obtain a license and conduct a background check before selling the firearm. Essentially, because in, in case your case doesn't make sense, here in the state of Texas, you can sell private property between two individuals. Guns, bikes, whatever, it doesn't matter. Your business is your business. Under this rule, it expands and encroaches into your local life to say you have to get a license or everybody has to get a license. Essentially, be, everybody's a gun dealer. And that is another infringement that we're looking at. But overall, the big news, and we'll cover it Friday. They'll probably drop have to cover it on Saturday because they're probably going to drop this sucker on Friday afternoon. That this is going to be an executive level gun control office. Your tax money being used to try and strip you of your God-given right to keep and bear arms.